Hi. Did you guys hear that Facebook was down today? I hadn't heard that. It was. If, is, that, I, I, is anybody watching? Nobody's cool. watching. But just in case you see this later, Facebook was down today. Um, so we're five hours late doing this little, um, little song and dance for you. What, what are we supposed to be talking about, Kim? Oh, we're going to talk about archives and what archives are and what they're not. And then we're going to look at our vault, which is through there. And we're going to talk about how to do house research because people ask us all the time, how do I research my house? That sounds interesting. Is anyone watching us? Great. <laughs> cool. Let's just do it. Yeah, I know. You can watch this later. Yeah. Hi, everybody watching in the future. Oh, um, hey. Oh, I'm Stacy. This is Kim. What do you do here? I'm the curatorial assistant uh, at the cool. Center for Sacramento History and the Sacramento History Museum, our sister organization in Old Sac. Just one person. Great. Yeah. Uh, I'm Kim person. Hayden, the senior archivist at the Center for Sacramento History. Let's go into our vault, shall we? This is where we work. Oh, I don't have a thing. <laughs> We're going to talk about house research and other things. Wow, look at the grandeur. <laughs> the grandeur. OK, so this is our storage vault. Um, it is around 20,000 square feet. And we have, as you can see, artifacts. And we have archival material, which is like documents and photos and stuff. Um, we are the official archives for the city and the county of Sacramento. So we have uh, government documents dating back to 1849. Plus, we also have personal papers from folk, people, organizations, businesses, schools, etc. So our aim is to tell the story of Sacramento by preserving its history and its historical um, records. So what do we have here? And what is an archive, you ask? How are we different from a library? We have the original documents that, for the most part, are unpublished. So you're the library, you got the books. They're sorted by subject. Here in the archives, we have the stuff the people who wrote the book used to write the book. So what they use to do their research, so original manuscripts, documents, um, et cetera. So what we have here in the archives is the stuff that's created in everyday life, in the process of your life. So if you run a business, we've got the ledgers for your record keeping. Uh, for the government, we've got case files for court cases, um, city council minutes, all the way back to 1849. You've got your diary, not your diary, but you know, someone's diaries, letters, etc. So it's all the we stuff that diary. you've created in the process of living your life that then later in the future people can use for historical research to learn more about Sacramento, about society at large, etc. So um, here at the Center for Sacramento History, like I said, we are the official city and county archive. So we've got government documents from 1849. We've got court cases. We've got um, uh, property records, all sorts of stuff. But then we also have some really great uh, personal collections, um, businesses, and people here in Sacramento. We have um, the KCRA and KOVR news film archive which is millions of feet of news film dating from the 50s to the 80s. And then we have the Sacramento Bee's photo morgue, which also dates from around the 40s into the 80s. No, into the now. Um, both negatives, photographs, and digital. And then we just have like a smattering of really interesting collections from various people like Eleanor McClatchy, the Wittenbrocks, who we'll talk about, um, just like a bunch of stuff to help tell the story Sacramento and um, we have it all organized in a strange way not like a library where it's um, by subject but here it's by who gave it to us and how we got it so as archivists we like to keep things in the order that we got it so, um, so you can have the context of what you're looking at and how it was kept and stored and created by the person who created it curators don't really like to do that curators do things but this is the archives crawl, <laughs> so just saying. 
Okay, so, um, <sighs> so that is brutal. a rundown of us and archives, and let's do this. We're going to talk about um, how to research a house. So we get a lot of reference questions. As you may know, we've been closed because there's a pandemic, so people haven't been able to come in. Um, so we, uh, cool. We, um, one of the questions that I get the most from people is, can you tell me about my house? Like, who used to live in it? When was it built? Um, did anything cool ever happen in it? Do you have any pictures of it? And the answers to those questions totally depend on where your house is. If it's in the main grid, we're gonna have more because that was always part of Sacramento. Um, if it's outside in the suburbs, we're gonna have less. And so we generally don't have, we can go to the map. Okay. We go to the map later. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so in general, like we're gonna have a little bit on a lot of houses and not a lot on most houses. Um, so we're gonna just head over yonder and talk about a house that we know a lot about. This is unusual. Unless you live in a Victorian mansion, we're not gonna have all this stuff about your house. But we're gonna tell you what we probably do have about your house. So for instance, I live in a cinder block house in kind of southeast Sacramento. There's nothing on my house here except for two building permits, that's it. Um, no pictures of it. Uh, so anyway, yeah, let's, let's discuss, shall we, Stacy? Sure, sure. Okay, our example house is 1800 J Street. It's uh, a little special because, well, it, it's, it's there. It's, it's the still there. Oh no. oh no. Thanks, Mark. Can you hear me okay, Mark? Maybe. 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 Oh dear. Well, I will try and talk loud, maybe? Okay, so um, we picked this house because Victorian mansion, um, we know a lot about the people who built it. 1800J was built by a family called the Wittenbrocks. And pretty special because we have a picture of the people who, who built her over here. Here we go. This gentleman right here, his name was Rudolf. Rudolf Wittenbrock. He was born in Prussia in 1825. He immigrated to the US at age nine with his parents. They settled in Virginia. At some point, he moved to St. Louis. He had a brother named Henry. In 1850, Rudolph and Henry came out to California. Any guesses what they might have been looking for in 1850 here in California? It's gold, it's gold, yeah. So they came out here looking for gold. They had a brief experience as gold miners and they returned to St. Louis. While they were in St. Louis, Rudolph married a lady named Elizabeth. Here's Elizabeth, right here, Elizabeth Boylston. They got married in 1852. In 1853, as a honeymoon trip, or what ended up being their honeymoon trip, Rudolph and Elizabeth came back out to California via ox team, covered wagon, pulled by oxen, so romantic. It took them five months. They made it all the way back here, where, after they got here, Rudolph bought a bunch of land and established himself, him and his brother, established themselves as really successful hops ranchers, hops farmers and ranchers in what is today Natomas. He owned a lot of property in the county. Um, in the census, he's listed as farmer, 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 but come to find out he was also a loan shark. <laughs> That's true, we did figure that we out. We did right? figure that's that out. <laughs> yes, just <laughs> last week. See, here at the Center for Sacramento History, we have really fun games called probate records. Hey, this could be a really good time to introduce the idea that when you're doing archival research, there's not just like a Wittenbrock file. 
There isn't. Oh, there's not a file on 1800 J Street. Although there actually is. It's right here. <laughs> but there isn't usually. Um, and that all of these things we used, like, I don't know, eight different collections here that had stuff and the house in it. And that's how archival research works. You have to go through a bunch of different stuff. If you know, you know. So here we have the um, Rudolph Witten Wittenbrock's probate file. And um, this is just something you can look for, or since we're not open for public research, you can email us and we can look for this for you if you happen to know the name of the person who built your house and or the name of anybody. Yeah, if you're doing who, genealogical research. Who, yeah, anybody who happened to die here in Sacramento County. Between what period would you say, Ken? Oh gosh, uh, 1852, I want to say 1945. There you go. So the Wittenbrocks had nine children, eight daughters, one son. Um, all of them, save one, survived to adulthood. One child passed away at age seven due to, typhoid. gosh, what was it, typhus? typhus? Yeah, she was initially buried in the Old City Cemetery, uh, but she was uh, disinterred, and the whole family is at East Lawn. So that is the story about them. We have, we have a few artifacts um, from the Wittenbrock family. Um, mainly through their one son. We have a picture, um, uh, looks like watercolor plus pastel, um, drawn by his one of his daughters, Ione Wittenbrock. She did that. And then his children, the son's children, George, his children were really, really musical. Um, his one son, Alvin, taught music lessons locally. Um, and an accordion that was owned. So yeah, we often, often we aren't, you aren't going to find oftentimes a photo of the family who built your historic house. But in this special case, we have a picture. In case you're wondering what the house looks like, what Andrew J looks like, we have of it. Photo from the 1930s. Here is a you can see it got a paint job. And then here's a photo of the 70s or 80s. Got another paint job there. And I believe all these photos came from our collection. They did. All these photos came from our collection. Okay, so you owned 1800 J. What else could, can you tell us about this house, Kim? Okay, well, um, I mean, in the text of let's say you want to research your house and you don't live in a Victorian mansion <laughs> what are we going to have on it um, the first thing you might ask is do you have photos and I would say probably not unless you live in the main grid in which case we are real lucky because this gentleman here Eugene Hepting who was an avid cyclist and photographer in Sacramento. Here he is with his bike. Um, yeah, that's not him. Anyway, he's great. We love him. He's sort of um, a Sacramento history hero because he rode his bike all over the main grid from the teens into the 50s, just taking pictures. Yes, so we have his bike. Yeah, we do have his bike. And it's injured um, from, I think, hitting a tree. I can't remember. I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, so these two photos are from his collection. And I pulled them from the scrapbook that they were in. Um, his wife donated it to us. So here they are. So when you are researching your own house, it's very possible we have a photo of it if it's in the main grid because Eugene Hepting probably took a photo. So you can see, like in this instance, you know, here's a random little house right there. Might be your house. How are you going to find it? Not by the address, because it's an inconsequential house. No offense, um, but you would look. Uh, you would. He, most of his are captioned with the cross streets. So this is on J Street between 18th and 19th. So go to our um, online catalog and look for. 
do a search of the cross streets of your house and look around and see if maybe it shows up in one of these. But this is, this is the most likely way that you're going to find a photo of your house. Otherwise, we don't have a lot of just random photos of houses because somebody had to have taken a photo of the house, labeled it, kept it for decades, and then given it to us. And There's you know, a lot of steps there. Yeah, when was the last time you took a photo of your house and labeled it with the address? You know what I mean? Side note, do that. But do that. Label your photos. It's actually really helpful for people in the future. So then, um, what other things do we have? Um, what other questions might someone ask about researching their house? Do you have my house plans? I own a historic house. Do you have my house plans here at the Center for Sacramento History, Kim? Probably not, but we might. If it was designed by one of the more uh, well-known architects here, like we have Charles Dean's collections, we have the Nicholas Tomich collection, we have um, Henry Devine. We're just about to get through on phasers. He did a lot of mid-century houses in um, like the pocket area. We just got his collection, but we haven't actually pulled it in yet. So if you have a house built by any of those people, yeah. If not, no, we probably building permits, like so. They date back to the teens. You can find these all online too at urecords.cityofsacramento.org. Every once in a while we have some that they um, But the secret to these is that have a reel and a frame number written on them, and when they do, that means we have a microfilm version of this that often has more to it and a lot of plans for whatever is going on in this building there. Like this one. Mark asks, how about Sanborn fire map? Mark, we're getting there. Calm down, Slow Mark. Down. Um, <laughs> so like Good this question. one is rebuild a stairway. So it's really likely that here with on real 295, there's going to be um, the plans for that stairway. And sometimes other house plans are in there. So I know I keep saying we might not have these things, but you can always ask and I will always look. Um, so then a lot of people ask who lived in this? And if you know who owned your house over time, you can go to the county recorder and they will tell you. Um, that is the easiest, fastest way to do it. You can do, it's called a reverse chain of title search. They'll look it up, they'll tell it to you. Um, if you wanna dive deep and find out what did that person do? City directories. We have these starting from 1850 up into the 1990s, and these are so cool. So I looked up the ones for this house, uh, 1800 J Street, and starting in 1913, there's a reverse house lookup, which means you can look it up by the address instead of the person's name. Because normally, you know, it's like a phone book, but without phone numbers. Um, and the cool thing about these is that it tells you what the person does. So we find Anton Mendes here. He's a master mariner. He found that one randomly. Love it. And this H means that he lives, that's his home. He lives at 1608 second. So anyway, I looked up um, this house and yes, they're old and falling apart. And um, 1800J, right here, it says H.E. Kleinsorge lives here. Who is that? I know. Stacy knows. I know. <laughs> well, the Wittenbrocks had eight daughters, seven of whom got married, and one of them married Mr. Kleinsorge. End yeah. End story. So if you look up <laughs> Mr. Kleinsorge in here, um, he's right here. And uh, no, it's not him. Oh, yeah, it is. Anyway, in, in this one, it doesn't tell you what he does or who he's married to, but often it does. Like you can see here, Albert, Albert is in Kleinsorge Brothers' window treat. Yes. Patrick mentioned that your mic is still cutting out. Sorry, Patrick. I don't know. You want to turn it off and just talk? Talk really loud? Yeah. Is it more annoying with it cutting out, or would it be more annoying with it not cutting out? Well, obviously, that's. <laughs> I can tell you the answer to that question. <laughs> um, but would it be better if I turned it off and just talked really loud? No response. That's just, I say it's up to you if you feel. Mm. Projecting. I'm not a very loud talker. Yeah. Okay, I'll try it. Okay. Well, Mr. Kleinsorge was Henry E. Kleinsorge, and he married Kate Wittenbrock. Ah, Kle uh, Mr. Kleinsorge was involved in real estate. He was president of the Western Fruit Company. Okay, so now I'm going to yell. Was. Is that better? Okay, so 
I looked up this house all the way up into the 30s to see how long the Klein Sorges lived there. Mm -hmm. And I found in 1938, Henry no longer lives there, but a gal named Kate does. And the city directory says it's his widow. Yep, That's yep. how great the city directories are. They tell you who the person is married to. So these are really fascinating and fabulous resources. The other way that I can tell you who lived in your house, who owned the property, and I can kind of fudge around what year it was built, if you're not sure, is assessor map books and rolls. So these fabulous things are, um, these two are from 1873, and here they tell you who owned the property. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have Rudolph Wittenbrock right here at the corner of J and 18th where the house was. Uh, actually, he owns all of this. And then with the same year, knowing that the, he owned property, I can come over here and look at this assessment roll. And he's up here, right here. And scroll down. Oh, there it is, J 18th and 19th. And I can see that he, his land and house had $3,700 worth of taxes. So that's what it was valued at. That's a lot. And so I looked at the assessor books between these time periods, I looked at 1872, 74, 75, and the value of the land and property was lower. So this tells me that this is the year the house was built because a major improvement happened to it. So that's a little archivist secret. Um, and really then, cool archivist secret. It is a cool archivist secret. So then the sandboard map is giant. Um, but useful, and I'm gonna need your phone. I know, I'm prepared, I've so, got it. Uh, Flashlight on. That's right. <laughs> All right, this is the Sanborn map. It's awesome. So what are we looking at? Um, it's a fire insurance company map, um, and this is 18th and J. So this is where the Wittenbrock house is, and we can use these to see if there were any changes to the property. So right here we see like, yep, there's a house on the property. That seems about right, right? But if you take a flashlight and you shine it under, you can see where things were pasted onto it. So yeah, it's normal here, but if you go down to this end of the property, hey, there used to be a building right here. And this block is actually even better because it, you can see like, oh God, there was a building here, there was one here. Um, so these are really cool to see, like, if you have a, you know, suspect, like, I think there used to be a shed in my backyard. Like, we can say definitively that, yes, at 18th and J Street, there was a shed in the backyard. Don't know when it came out, but it was there. So somebody at Sanborn had to physically go in and paste yeah. changes yeah. to your property. Yeah, so they would do that every few years. Isn't that neat, guys? It is, and this one is from... Um, let me show you the title page. It's very pretty. It's from 1915, but it has updates up until 1952 in it. And I believe we sort of mentioned, but also didn't, that the Wittenbrocks owned almost the whole block. They, they owned um, between J and K and 18th and 19th Street. And when one of their children would get married, they'd get a house. Boom. And so all the siblings kind of live together in a little compound between 18th and 19th and J and K. Yeah. So there, just, there's only one house left of that compound and today. It's that one, and right? it's 1800 J, the original house. Um, oh, wait, one more thing. I, um, the greatest resource ever, in Sacramento, is the Sacramento Bee Archive, which you can access through the uh, um, Sacramento Public Library website go to the digital books and media section, you have to use your library card to log in, which I know you all have. Um, and then you can search the Bees archive back in 1957 with images of each page. Uh, we happen to have the original newspapers here, of course, but um, we there's a lovely photo of it, which we should have, but we can't find it. We have all of their photos from their photo morgue, but we have a lot of them. This is one that we do not have. Um, so it was a campaign office, like uh, operated out of the house. So when people ask, you know, did anything cool ever happen in my house? The place I always go to look is in the B. Because 
because you're going to find new stories that may have happened in your house, which, you know, often aren't pleasant. But, you know, then you know anyway. Um, but I've also found um, in the real estate section, some people, uh, your house will have an ad for when it was for, for sale. And sometimes it'll have like a cool little line drawing of the house. And those are really neat. Um, so I always, yeah, the, the Sacramento Bee Archives is a treasure. And, you and it's know. free, everybody. It's, and it's free. free. If you have a library card, go and on the library's website. <laughs> 49er <laughs> um, Anyway, so that's kind of what I think I covered all of it. Like what we can tell you, like, uh, you know, yeah, we might have photos of your house. Yes, we can definitely tell you who lived in your house. Possibly we have plans, probably not. And I can tell you what year it was built. And if you are looking to deep dive into some of the people that lived in your house, we can find out who lived in your house and see if we can do research on it. So. And you can get a good start on that yourself yes. using the B archives online. And it's just true. reading old newspaper articles, we found that the house was a campaign headquarters. It was a like hippie colony kind of place. Yeah. It was an art gallery. Um, and in one of the newspaper articles, it says straight up that um, a new owner was uh, combing estate sales, looking for um, fixtures to re replace ones that had been damaged by the hippies who lived there. So um, j just like the, the owners now of 1800J, if they wanted to know if their lighting fixture was original to the house, probably not. And you can figure that out reading B articles. Yeah. So one more thing that I think we should really point out is this news article about a playful squirrel <laughs> that is But when I pulled this newspaper the other day, I came across this whole thing. And, you know, we might as well share it because it's pretty great. But here's, you know, a squirrel in a car. Coming to a social media post near yeah. you. We've got this squirrel in a tree. The guy, this is his friend. The squirrel's in the house. The squirrel's, like, leaping from... For those spooky people who are always interested in like, well, did somebody die in my house? No, yeah. Not uh, our fault. Not our fault. Please um, look at the Archives Crawl Facebook page for future events that are all happening this week. Yeah. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>